Main article. Skirmish on Cloud City. Nobody fights the Empire and wins. Boy. You'd better hope you're wrong about that. General. Ram Kota and Starkiller Starkiller's search for Ram Kota took him across the galaxy. From the Jedi's last sighting on Nar Shaddaa to the ancient Sith world Zeost. Finally discovering Kota's latest location on Bespin. Ram Kota, after his defeat and blinding by Starkiller, had fallen into depression, resorting to alcoholism to drown his sorrows. Intercepting an Imperial transmission that Kota had been found and the Empire was sending one of its most dangerous agents to retrieve him, Starkiller was forced to rush to Bespin. He approached Kota in the Vapor Room Cantina, masquerading as a Jedi. Ram Kota was drunk and uncooperative, and before Starkiller could reason further with the unkempt Jedi, they were attacked by the local stormtrooper garrison, backed by Ugnaught contraptions. For the first time, Starkiller actively engaged the Empire as an enemy, rather than merely killing off possible witnesses. While Kota dived under a table, Starkiller drew his lightsaber and attacked, making the heavily armed and armored Ugonauts a priority. He disabled one with telekinesis and overloaded the other's electrical systems, killing the pilot and scattering the stormtroopers. Starkiller found himself hampered by the need to avoid harming innocent bystanders, if only to keep up his Jedi masquerade though he still intended to use his original landing site to extract Kota. Slicing through the Vapor Room storeroom while Kota eventually got moving, Starkiller didn't hesitate to attack the Imperial forces, making short work of them. Then he dragged Kota along the series of corridors to the Vapor Room's supply dock. He warned Juno to stay away from the loading dock where he expected to meet a heavy Imperial presence, and instead go to the shipping balloon dock. Starkiller himself was unconcerned, planning to board the rogue shadow via force jump. He saw the Imperial Shadow Guard waiting at the docks and killed the guard's stormtrooper escort with blast deflections. With Starkiller engaged, Kota made himself scarce, searching out an alternate escape route which allowed Starkiller to drop his masquerade and draw on the dark side. Blasting the guard back with a telekinetic surge, Starkiller attacked with force lightning, winning the subsequent energy struggle and blowing the guardsman's corpse off the side of the dock. Making his way to the balloon dock, and hoping Kota was still alive as well, Starkiller puzzled over the Shadow Guard's identity and affiliation, deducing him to be a servant of Palpatine rather than Vader. While he made short work of the Imperial forces in his path, he was attacked by another guardsman. This one was more able than the first, though Starkiller ultimately dismembered him with a giant fan blade. Arriving at the dock, he found it crowded with stormtroopers and Ugonauts, led by two Shadow Guardsmen. During the fight, Starkiller's connection to the Force deepened, and he fought on pure reflex. Stormtroopers and Ugonauts were thrown off of the dock or into each other, and Starkiller even brought heavy freight raining down from one of the shipping balloons above. When his enemies regrouped, Starkiller seized one of the shipping balloons itself and sent it crashing down onto them. As he stood in triumph, Kota appeared. Kota was unimpressed by Starkiller's victory feeling that it didn't even begin to dent Palpatine's infinite army. However, after Starkiller appealed to his warrior sense of honor, Kota agreed to join him, revealing that he had a contact in the Imperial Senate who could use Starkiller's lightsaber, due to his eagerness to kill stormtroopers. Shortly after rescuing Kota, Starkiller began feeling drawn to the Jedi Temple, thus causing him to return to Coruscant for a third time. 